What is up YouTube? Today I'm bringing you guys a editing tutorial. Not only a tutorial, but kind of a walkthrough of how I edit some of my rainy photos. Photos pretty much just rain in them and have a, a lot of wet surfaces. And I'm going to show you guys three photos that I think are pretty cool, all in the rain. And I'm going to walk you through how I edited them. I'm not going to edit new ones, I'm just going to walk you through the, through the process of how I edited them all my settings for all of them and all of that. Pretty simple. That's pretty much it for this video. Let's get straight to this. Okay, so these are the three photos that I'm going to show you guys how to edit. These photos were all taken in the rain, obviously, since these were Okay, so these are the three photos that I'm going to show you how to edit. Obviously, they're all in the rain, as this is a tutorial on how to edit photos in the rain. So this first one here is this just random street shot, little taxi making a turn, some truck. It was on, I believe, like 46th Street, right by Times Square. And I like this photo a lot. I didn't even know it was going to be like this but until I edited it. Honestly, it was just a really, really like coincidence, I guess, that it came out so good. Because the regular picture itself isn't that good, but the edit is so nice, in my opinion, at least. This photo here, I love this photo so much. There's just an array of colors. Your purples, blues, reds, yellows, and it's awesome. I love this one. This one actually got photoed by a huge photo account called The Imaged. Um, they have about 200,000 followers, about and it got about I think 15,000 likes on Instagram so I think this one is dope I love this photo so much and this last photo here I never posted it on Instagram but I want to eventually this photo is just a guy with an umbrella crossing the street and he's just chilling he's walking through Times Square 48th Street and I like this one a lot it has like a mystery towards it I don't know and the tones are really cool this one, I act, for this picture, I actually followed this guy for like a full block going behind him and stuff. And then I finally got in front of him and then I took this picture. I thought it was pretty cool. So I'm going to show you how to edit all three of these photos. First, we're going to start with this one. So this photo is pretty much just emphasizing the highlights. And it's got like a high fade and like the shadows are really brought down. That's really all this photo is in all honesty. That's really all it is. So if we look here, first thing is first is the temperature is really more on the blue side. If you look, if you go back to Ash shot, it was definitely more yellow. See how it's actually kind of that actually looks kind of nice to be honest. But it was definitely more yellow. If I put it back, you can see I made it much more blue and that I made the tint a little more purple. Next, I kept the exposure the same. The contrast I bring up, I always usually bring up the contrast a fair amount. The highlights were brought up. I'll show you the happens when the highlights are brought down. That's what happens. You don't want that. So you want the highlights around like 40-ish. 38 is great. The shadows, again, you want the shadows up. If you bring the shadows down, you can't see anything. And if you bring them up all the way, it's just too much shadow. It's too much light. Now with the whites, the whites are very important for these photos because if, if, if the whites are normal like this, if we bring it back to zero, it doesn't make too much of a difference, but if we, if we brought it down, you can see it kind of like, it makes the highlights in, the, in those whites like kind of like a dull, and we bring them too high, it makes everything a little too bright, it still looks kind of nice, but then things start to look overexposed and a little noisy, especially on the taxi cab. So we're going to put that back to plus 38. Next, we got the blacks. If we brought the blacks in the middle. It's a little, it's a little dark for my taste. If we bring them down too much, it gets too dark. Bring them up here. It's a little too bright. So right here, my opinion is like just perfect. With clarity, I think the clarity really brings out the detail. You can really see the rain and the droplets on the cars. If we bring them up too high, it's just too much. Right here is kind of good, but I like it at plus twenty-five. I, I don't want to see too much. I don't want it to be unrealistically detailed, if you know what I mean. I never mess with the vibrance of the saturation, but it looks kind of cool if the, if the vibrance is kind of high. The saturation, again, 
if it's too high. I mean, in this photo, the colors just get like really, really gross. Next, the tone curve. This is the most important part. This photo, this this photo, runs on the tone curve. Okay, so here we have our tone curve. We have three points. If we put it back to what it originally is, a linear line, then if that made sense at all, then this is what it looks like. That's a f that looks terrible. That looks disgusting. Like they don't, I'm never gonna post that. Neither should you. But if we bring this tone curve right here. Okay, we start getting something kind of nice. It looks kind of cool now. Now, it, the key thing is that we're going to make two more points. And we're going to bring this one down. And this one down with it as well. And that's how you get that really, really nice. Just that, like, the blacks look so clean. The highlights are just perfect. And the, there's a nice little fade to it. There's not much fade to it, but, it, like, I don't know how to explain it, to be honest. Next, the saturations. I made the yellows a little more orange, just because it looks nicer. Is a little bit, is a little bit of a difference. And the blues, I made them more of a aqua, a cyan, if you may, just because it looks way better than the purple, bluish color. So, saturation. I brought the greens, aquas, purple, magentas down to about halfway, and the blues down a little bit. I don't want to bring the blues down too much because I still wanted that color. But the blues brought down a little bit. Looks perfect. The blues are too high. Then I don't, it still looks good. It's just I don't know. I don't like oversaturated photos sometimes. You know. Next, I didn't, I didn't mess with the luminances at all. I probably should have to be honest. I probably could have did some really cool stuff with the luminances. Man, I really should have to be honest. But that's not important now. Next is the red highlights in the split toning section. See those red highlights right there. It still looks really cool without the red highlights, but with them, I don't know that those like you can see the, the the red highlights in the puddles, and it looks really really cool. Next is the shadows. I gave them a, a aqua blue tint, again with no shadows. No good, but with the little shadows, it has that blue cool temperature feeling to it. Next is the vignetting, negative fifteen, nothing special there, and I added a little bit of um aqua primary well, in the blue primary section in the hues I made it a little more aqua like so to give it that more cyan aqua feel you know that's this photo I think that's pretty cool next we're gonna go to the taxi the taxi is just a crazy crazy photo in my opinion I love this photo so much so with this photo if we look at the temperature well first of all let's look at let's look at it Let's look at the completely bland version. So this is the before and after of this photo. As you can see, that's a pretty big difference. That's a really, really big difference, okay? So to do that, it, it really isn't that hard to get that look. Again, I really didn't do too much editing in this photo. If, you, if we go through it, I really did not do much editing at all whatsoever. So if we look at the, um, the temperature and the tint, all I did was make the yellows more blue. Just like so. Next, I added some contrast. Without the contrast, it looks a little uh, dullish. But with the contrast, you get that really, you get those highlights to pop out on the car and in the street. And it looks dope. Highlights all the way up. Without the highlights, it still kind of looks cool, but like with them, I just love it. Shadows, again, you're getting it with, with the shadows whites all the way up blacks all the way up it's giving you that it's giving you that freedom to mess with the tone curve when all these things are up again clarity i decided not to put clarity in this one because it added too much highlights and it emphasized the saturation too much so the saturation again i put it down because with it high look at that that's gross that's way too much color so i put it like right there and it just gives it that super cool feeling. I don't know how to describe it. It's just like, ah, I love it so much. And again, with the tone curve, it's almost the same thing as the last one, except the last one, it was more like this. But with this one, it's higher to put color and the high. It it gives the highlights more like, it makes the highlights brighter and it gives more color to the highlights. Next, I made the yellows more orange, the blues more cyan, just like the last photo. I desaturated the reds because there was a little too much red in this photo and I wanted to bring it down. 
Next, highlights and shadows are both red, just a little bit. If we take out, take off that, it's a little more cool temperature, but with the reds, it's a little bit more. And, and then with the shadows, I bring it down. Again, a little more cool. I wanted that warm feeling, and it's not much of a difference, but you can still tell when you actually take it away. And with the vignetting, you needed some vignetting. You just needed it for this photo. It, it, it's needed. So there's the vignetting. That's really it for this photo. It's pretty simple. And then I believe I did. I used some brushes. No, I didn't actually. Never mind. I did not use any brushes. So next is this photo right here. There's this guy walking across the street. It's raining. He's got his umbrella. I completely silhouetted him out except for this little bag he was carrying. I could have silhouetted it out, but I decided not to just because I don't feel like it. So, this photo used a lot of different things. I used three different brushes to completely silhouette them out. But I'm not going to try to sil out, silhouette them out. I'm going to teach you how to get this look. This super nice, like, faded highlights coming from Times Square. And then these, like, dark shadows going this way. And everything is just, like, everything is super warm. There's no cool tones, really, except for in the street right here and right here to the right. Those are like the only cool tones in the photo, which were originally like bluish green lights, but I completely desaturated them. So now if we go to as shot, I only made it a little warmer. I made the temperature a little more yellow because I wanted to get more warm colors in there. Next, contrast all the way up. As you can see, big difference if it, the contrast isn't all the way up. So I put it all the way up. <laughs> Highlights. There would be too much in the photo, I think, if they were all the way up, and if they're all the way down, just, I don't know, I like, it, all the way down didn't make a difference that much, but I still like it, like right here. Shadows, kind of in the middle, a little more, shadows, a little negative on the whites, and a little bit up on the blacks. The blacks make a difference, not that much. It really brings to the highlights though. Like it makes the the highlights like brighter, I guess. Next, we have the most important part of this photo in my opinion, and that's the clarity. Okay? The clarity is decreased in this photo. In this photo, if I increase it, it looks cool still. But when I decrease the clarity, it just gives it this like misty, dreaming, mystery feel to it. Like you're in a dream almost. I love it so much. I I've started decreasing the clarity on a lot of my photos lately. Next here we have a tone curve. It's the same thing as last time except the bottom point is brought down a little more into the left. Again it goes all the way up and then I bring the highlights up a little bit at the last second to get that to get those highlights a little more stronger. Next hues yellows are all the way up. Oranges are all the way to the red kind of. So I cause I didn't want to see any orange or yellows in here. Just because the red looks super nice. Blue's a little more cyan. As you can see, the street changes a little bit if I change it. You can go either way. It doesn't really matter. Saturation, everything is down super, super low, except for your oranges and your yellows. That's because if we reset the saturations here, look how gross this looks. Look how gross of a picture this is. That's disgusting. That's just disgusting. You do not want that at all. So next we're going to go to luminances, luminances, if I could say the word. Again, nothing really changed, just the aqua's a little higher. As you can see, if I decrease that, it gets more blue. If I increase it, it gets more uh, red. Shadows, all the way red this time. If I increase it too much, way too much. If I decrease it too much, it still actually looks really cool like this, in my opinion. I don't know, I just don't, I'm not a fan of the cool colors that much in, my, in this photo. Next, we have the vignetting. Vignetting is pretty important in my opinion. It just gives it like super good feel in the bottom corners of the photo on the puddles. I like it. And that's really all it is. That is the before and after of this photo. That's a huge difference. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's insane. The fact that you can go from this photo here with all these different colors to this photo right here is so cool. That's awesome. Anyway guys, that's been it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you learned something, let me know in the comments. Hopefully you guys start using this on your photos. I think it's pretty cool. I, rain photos are a lot of fun. It's fun to mess around with them. Comment and let me know what you guys want to see in the future. I want to post a lot more editing stuff on the days that I don't vlog. So let me know what kind of photos you want to see. Portraits, 
landscape, whatever, whatever it is. I can, I'll show you guys how I edited them for me. Be sure to subscribe for videos whenever I can put them out. And I'll see you guys. My name is James. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Just met the girl today and now she's holding your A7R.